is an award-winning Egyptian-born journalist whose columns appear in newspapers in Qatar, Israel, Canada, and Denmark. Please welcome Mona El Tawe. Hey, Mona. Did I say that right? I do. Yeah. Oh, good. Hi. El Tawe. Yeah. yeah. All right. I do the best I can. Yeah, that's okay. It's a long name. <laughs> I know. Well, you must be very excited because I know you're not just a journalist. You're an Egyptian. This is your country, and like I said, this is a big fucking deal. I mean, this is. We're going to find out how the future, really, of the Middle East goes from here, because this is Egypt. This is not some backwater. This is the big country in the Middle East, and they're making a big decision about which way they're going to face. Absolutely, Bill. I'm ecstatic. I'm 43 years old. This is the happiest moment You're of my life. You're 43 years old? I am. Boy, Egypt don't crack. <laughs> <laughs> we do well in Egypt, huh? Yeah, <laughs> but, you know... You what... can't flirt with me from the beginning. I'm no, no, no. I... Come on. <laughs> I, I would never flirt with you. I might lose my head. <laughs> You've been watching. Okay. I read the paper. Uh, and we're going to get to that. Well, that's something I want to ask because, you know, the people we see in the streets, and that's all we see on American television, it's, it's people in Cairo and Alexandria, the two big sophisticated cities in the central squares of the town. Mm -hmm. Is that really representative of the whole country? I mean, if we had demonstrations just on the Upper West Side in New York and the Castro District in San Francisco, <laughs> no one would say that's America, but we seem to say that's Egypt. But is that really Egypt? Absolutely not. I can tell you mm. with great pride that the El Tahawi family actually hails from southern Egypt, a very conservative part of Egypt. And we have sent out thousands upon thousands. This is not just Cairo and Alexandria. This is big industrial towns where the trade unionists have taken part. This is grandparents, children, um, young people, people from every walk of life. And it's not just Egypt and Alexandria. It's a nationwide thing. And it's so important that I like to say that Hosni Mubarak is our Berlin Wall. And remember what happened in 1989 when the Berlin Wall fell. He's this... ugly, he's strong. There you go, we've got to topple it, right? We've got to push him over. So if we can get our Berlin Wall to fall, and we will, I'm confident we will, you can imagine the freedom fever that will spread across the region. This is incredibly important. Well, that's, uh, that's what we hope. But here's the problem, and I know it must infuriate all Arabs when they hear, you know, Arabs need a strong man. That's what we've always said. However, let me give you some facts, or at least stats from a Pew study on Egypt. 82% of Egyptians support stoning as a punishment for adultery. 84% favor the death penalty for Muslims who leave the religion. I also saw a Sharia law uh, as the only believe, people who believe the Sharia should be the only source of legislation. 7% in Turkey, 14% in Iran, 64% in Egypt. Sharia law. I got to tell you something, Bill. Nobody is in the streets of Cairo and Alexandria or anywhere else in Cairo braving the brutal forces of Hosni Mubarak so that they can get stoning or Sharia. They're out there for freedom and dignity. Right, but that and was if... my first question. That's not the whole country. <laughs> it is the whole country. This is the we whole country. Millions... No, no, wait, wait, wait. I'm Egyptian, and I can tell you that I have never seen anything like this. What we're essentially seeing is Egyptians of every walk of life out there saying, we are done with well, these strong men that you have. what about 84% who want well, the death why, why do you want to keep going back to the death penalty? I'm because talking about freedom. Because these are facts. You no, know, but, but I'm giving you an even more exciting I hate to fact. bring reality reality into this. this. But the reality that you're watching on your news every day is, you know, this is... Address you know, this reality. Wait, 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 wait. I will, but if you give me a chance to finish my question. Okay. I didn't think we were going to get into Fox News kind of, you know, sparring matches that quick. But hey, you want to go head to head, I will. I, I... Give me a chance no, to speak, this is though. not Fox News. This is reality. I know. I, I want to talk about reality. The reality is... I agree. No, the reality is we have a succession of old men in the Arab world that your administration have been supporting and that your administration know are dictators that encourage this kind of conservative thinking because they have shut down every kind of opposition to their rule except opposition based on religion. Mm -hmm. What we're seeing in Egypt today is young people going out in the street and saying we are done with, with these old men. And you know how these old men are reacting? Did you see the interview yesterday with Egypt's vice president, who, by the way, used to torture for the U.S. administration right. in their rendition program? Suleiman. Exactly. Omar Suleiman. He Not is... the Octomom, Suleiman. Omar but... Suleiman, who was just as bad as Hosni Mubarak. And he was sitting there. Christian Amanpour was asking him, what if, if the demonstrators don't right. go home? He says to her, we're going to call their parents up and tell them to tell them to go home. And I'm like, fuck you, okay? What? Because this entire revolution, I'm fired up 
Ethiopia. Yeah. This entire revolution <laughs> I'm with is you. about I'm... telling these old men who have strangled our countries, fuck you. It's time to leave. And I'm telling your administration, let them go and let us let us take our country back. Right. So, you know, all these there's myths, there's all these myths about the Arab world, how we like the strong leader, how we're lazy, how we're passive. What we're witnessing in Egypt right now is the dem demolition of these myths. You've got people out there, but, being camels and horses, for God's sake, right. and they're saying we still want freedom, and they're going to get it. Yeah. No? Okay. Yeah. And that's... Look, I'm on your side. I, I want this to happen. I, you know, we do worry about the... Re I at least worry about the religiosity of the world. I worry about it world. too, of course. You should. I mean, I, you're a woman. I mean, I, if the other side, I mean, the, the, the country I would compare Egypt to, I haven't heard this a lot on the news because it's not an Arab country, but it's Iran. There's another country with a great history, a lot of smart people, you know, a lot of pride. But a, look, they had a revolution, too. but it got hijacked. Yes. Thugs stole their revolution. Yes. And that could happen in your country, We're too. We're watching very closely. And because you know what inspired what happened in Egypt? You mentioned Tunisia, this tiny, brave little country called Tunisia that right. basically set the Arab imagination on fire. Just 10 million people. It took them 29 days to demolish a dictatorship of 23 years. So basically, Arabs are sitting there going, oh, my God, we can get rid of these old farts. Let's do it, you know? But, but yeah, and this is really more about jobs, right, and uh, the economy and living a normal life than it is about religion. Absolutely. It's but about dignity, Bill, because, you know, you know, one of the groups that set the, that inspired this revolution, it was called We Are All Khalid Saeed. Khalid Saeed was a young Egyptian man, 20 year, 28 years old, who was brutally beaten to death by Mubarak's police right. forces. So this group, now, the, the man who started up this Facebook group, essentially called We Are All Khalid Saeed, is currently in Egyptian state custody. I can't imagine what he's going through, what kind of torture he's going through, because he helped inspire. His name is Wael Ghunim, and he's also the Middle East director for uh, Middle East and North Africa for Google. So here's one young man who's saying it's not about religion, it's about dignity, it's about protection. But it, but it is sort mentality. of about religion, because I think what it enters into it, and you answered this question, it's about jobs. Okay, why when an American company outsources jobs, why does it go to China? Why does it go to India? Uh, Brazil. Why don't they want to go to the Middle East? They started, you know, they started actually. They started some Not centers much. in Egypt. You know why? Because the Mubarak regime basically pockets everything that comes into the country. Mm. And they know that. And it's one of the most corrupt regimes in the country. 40% of Egyptians live on $2 or less a day, and the right. Mubarak family's fortune is in the billions. So, so it's about poverty, it's about unemployment, but it's also about dignity. 30 years have been strangled by this one man. And Egyptians, young Egyptians, another person, I want to tell you about another person who helped inspire this revolution, because you're asking about religion and I, women. I, I, I can't because I hear the panel getting restive. Uh, I have to tell you about a woman, though. Like I say, go ahead. A young Egyptian woman. <laughs> A young, this is a revolution, damn it. A young Egyptian woman who videotaped herself saying, look, I know you're all scared out there, but I'm scared too, and I'm going to go out there and say enough of dictatorship. She uploaded this video on her Facebook page and helped start a revolution. So don't talk to me about stonings and all this other crap. Talk to me about young people who want to take back their country from this ugly dictator who your administration can't seem to let if go of. it works there, we're going to try it here. Yes. All right, thank you very much. We've got to get to the panel. You're terrific. I wish you luck. I'm with you. All right. Thank you. Let's meet our panel.